Hello YouTube, I hope you're having a great day. We're talking about the Word 2016 exam and we're looking at the domain called Format Text, Paragraphs, and Sections. Overall, this accommodates for 25 to 30% of the exam. I'll go ahead and throw up a graphic of the domain so that you can see it. This domain covers insert text and paragraphs, format text and paragraphs, and order and group text and paragraphs. Let's go ahead and jump into Word. We are talking about the Word 2016 exam, and we're looking at the domain called Format, Text, Paragraphs, and Sections. This accounts for about 25 to 30% of the overall exam. We're going to look at the subdomain called Insert Text and Paragraphs. And the first thing it tells us that we need to be able to do is to find and replace text. To do that, we're on the Home tab and we're in the Editing group here. And what we want to do is select Replace, or you can do Control H on your keyboard as a keyboard shortcut. In this dialog box, the Find What will look for a specific word. For this, we're going to go ahead and change this to Title. And what we want to change Title to is Heading. So what we're telling Word to do here is to look for the word title and replace it with heading. Now you have the option here of replace or replace all. If it tells you in the task that it needs you to replace all instances within the document, then you would select replace all. Or if it just tells you one place, you would select replace. But before we click either of those, I want to go ahead and click this more drop down box because there are a lot of search options that are important. In this replace section, something else you could see is some of these formatting sections or you might be asked to insert some type of special thing like look for an in dash or a column break. So be mindful of this. We're going to collapse this section and we'll select replace all. For this, it tells us that it is completed changing all of those words. We'll click OK and we can click close. Something else it tells us that we want to do is to know how to cut, copy and paste text. Let's go ahead and select this heading here and we're on our home tab. We're in the clipboard group and we have the option to copy or you can do control C on your keyboard or you can select cut control X on your keyboard. Let me tell you the difference between these two because a lot of people get confused with this copy simply copies. If we copy this heading, it'll copy that text and allow me to place it in multiple parts by just doing the paste feature or hitting control V on my keyboard. The cut feature will actually remove what I have selected and allow me to put it in a different position when I use the paste feature. I'll go ahead and demonstrate the copy first. So if I do control V, control V, control V, control V, and notice it went ahead and it copied that. Now let me go ahead and select this again and do control X. Notice this time that that heading disappeared. And let me go here so you can see it pasted. I'm gonna go ahead and hit control V and notice it went ahead and it placed that text there. Now what I've done is I've just used control V or the paste feature here to do that, but I want to show you something else. But before that, I'm going to go ahead and change the color here and let's change the size a little bit so you can see what I'm about to do. So for this, I'll go ahead and just do control C to copy. I'm going to go to the next line in this document. And instead of just doing the paste here, I'm going to look at more paste options. Now I can click this drop down here to get that, or if I right click here, I have special paste options such as keep source formatting, which would just paste it as it is. You could do the merge formatting, which is what's in the document compared to what I have. We can make this a picture or we can keep text only. You should be familiar with these different paste options. I'll just go ahead and paste the text. This domain also tells us that we need to be able to replace text using the autocorrect. Let's go ahead and go to the file options. Now your options might be in a slightly different location on that left hand side. I'm using Office 365 for this demonstration, but if you're using Microsoft Office 2016, it might be in just a little bit different place. But once you get to this section here, it's the same. We want to go to the proofing section. And what we want to do is look here, change how Word corrects and formats text as you type. And we're going to look for the autocorrect options, which is going to bring up a brand new dialog box. This is going to allow you to add to the autocorrect library. For example, if I type in DM here, it doesn't know what DM is, but if I type this in my document, I want Word to correct it to direct message. So I'm going to go ahead and click here and I'm going to go ahead and type in direct message. I'm going to click add. And notice it's been added to here. Now watch what happens when I close out of all this. If I type in DM space, it went ahead and put in direct message for me. 
And then we also need to be able to know how to insert special characters. Go ahead and add another new line to this document. I'm going to go to the insert tab here at the top and I'm going to go to the symbols group. And then I have the symbols drop down. And so maybe you're asked to add the copyright symbol or maybe you need to add the pound sign. You could do that simply by looking through here and selecting it. Or you could be asked to add more symbols and you have an entire symbol library. Hopefully on the exam, if they do this, they'll give you a character code so you can quickly find whatever it is that they have you looking for. We're going to hit cancel. We're looking at the subdomain called format text in paragraphs. The very first thing it tells us that we need to be able to do is to apply font formatting. So let's go ahead and look here at this word. There's not a whole lot going on, but I have the option of changing the font. Maybe I don't like that and I want to use Arial Black. I can. I can change our font size here. Maybe I want 24. I can make it bold, italics. I can add a shadow. I can change the color. Here is some of the font settings that we can add to this. So you kind of get the hint. But I can also click here this dialog box to get even more options. I have font here. I have advanced as far as character scaling, spacing, and position. You should be mindful of this dialog box as well. This subdomain also tells us that we need to be able to apply formatting using the format painter. Now this is one of my favorite features because of how awesome it is. So I went ahead and in the previous step added a bunch of font formats to this. The format painter allows me to apply all of the settings that I applied to this to other text in this document. I'm on the home tab. I'm in the clipboard group. I'm going to go ahead and click format painter here and watch what happens. Now that I've clicked that my cursor has changed just a little bit. Notice there's a paintbrush. And if I click this word here heading, Notice I went ahead and applied that format to that word and my cursor went back to normal. If I needed to apply this to multiple words or multiple sections, if I have my cursor here, I highlight and I double click format painter. I can go ahead and click here and notice heading change. But notice that my cursor is still loaded with all the settings. So maybe I want that three here selected. I can apply that or I just want randomly want to select words. I could do that. And then when I'm done with that, I can hit the escape key on my keyboard. This subdomain tells us that we also need to be able to set our line and paragraph spacing as well as indentation. I'm going to go ahead and select this paragraph here and I'm on the home tab. I'm in the paragraph group. I'm actually going to open up this dialog box. I'm going to do some of the settings here, but I want to pop this open. In here, there's a lot such as my line spacing here. Right now it's set at single, but I could set it to double. I can also change my before and after text. So if it asks you to do that, that can be found here. There are other parts on Word you can find this as well. I also have my indentation for left and right. Right now it's set at zero, but watch what happens when I push this over 0.5. I'm going to go ahead and click OK so you can see that. And notice it went ahead and it pushed that over half an inch. I'm going to pop this back open because I want you to see this special section here. I have a first line indent that pushes that first line here just a little bit further. I'm going to go ahead and pop this open again just so you can see the hanging indent, which is the complete opposite. And notice it went ahead and all the lines after the first one get pushed in by 0.5. There's really a lot in here and you should be familiar with this. We should also look at the line and page breaks because you could be asked to do a number of things like keep lines together or page break before, suppress line numbers, don't hyphenate. Again, there's a lot in here and you should be familiar with this dialog box. This subdomain tells us that we need to be able to clear the formatting. We have a lot of things going on in this document. So I'm going to go ahead and hit control A on my keyboard to select everything. And with everything in this document selected, I'm on the home tab. And what I want to do here is look for this button, clear all formatting. Now watch what happens when I click this. Notice that all of the text goes back to what it originally was set to. And there's no special formatting within this document now. We're told that we need to be able to apply a text highlight color to text selections. Let's go ahead and select heading two here. And you want to make sure you don't select too much like what I just did. But we're in the font group and this is our highlight section. We're going to click this open and we have a lot of different colors. And if you're not sure what the highlight is, if you hover, it will tell you what it's called. So if it said teal, this is the one for you. We'll go ahead and select that and notice that there's a highlight to that heading. The subdomain tells us that we also need to be able to apply built in styles to text. And so, for example, we have this heading three. Maybe we want to apply the heading two here and look, it changed some of the line spacing. The font size, it gave it some different characteristics like I can drop this and now everything underneath that section is collapsed. I can go ahead and pop it back out. There are a lot of different styles here. This is different than what can be found on the design tab in this section. So you want to know the difference between the two. And then the last thing that this subdomain tells us that we need to be able to do is to change text to word art. 
I have this word heading. With that selected, if I go to the insert tab here at the top and I go to the text group, I can click this word art dropdown and then I can select whatever I want here. If it asks you to do this on the exam, it'll tell you what it wants. So instead of just guessing, make sure you hover over the styles before you do any type of selection. And notice it went ahead and applied that word art style to there. We're looking at the subdomain called order and group text and paragraphs. This domain tells us that we need to be able to format text in multiple columns. I'm going to go ahead and select this first section of text. And then I'm going to go to the layout tab here at the top. And where I'm looking is the page setup group. And what I want to do is click the columns drop down. And for this, I'll go ahead and just select two. And notice it went ahead and it put that text that was selected into two different columns. This subdomain also tells us that we need to be able to insert page section or column breaks. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom here and we'll look at a few things. I'm going to put my cursor here in front of this text. I'm on the layout tab in the page setup group. We have the break section and you have a lot that you can choose from. The first thing it tells us is we can insert a page break. And notice it went ahead and dropped everything before where my cursor was at to a, a new page. Now, when you are just looking at this document, you can't see there's a page break. I would encourage you to know that this button on the home tab exists, the show hide, because it will reveal to you different breaks. Let's go back to the layout tab. The next break it tells us that we need to be able to do is a section break, which can be found here in the break section. There are different section breaks here underneath this category. We have next page, continuous, even page, and odd page. So you want to be able to know how to put those different breaks in. And then finally, we have the column breaks, which can be found here. You should know where these breaks are and why you would use certain ones. It gives you a definition for each break within this section. And then the last thing it tells us in the subdomain that we need to be able to do is to change page setup options for a section. The first thing you would want to do is put your cursor within that section that you're going to make the changes to. That would be a reason to have the show hide marks on because it will show you where those sections are and you can easily put your cursor where it needs to be. From here, we're on the layout tab. We're in the page setup group and we're going to go to the page setup dialog box. And then this is where I want you to see where we can apply the changes within this area. So we can select this section, this point forward or the whole document. It's important that this section would be checked and that you could start making some changes to that section in here. Thank you for watching this video. My hope always as I create new content is that my viewers feel better able to carry out tasks in Microsoft. If you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know that you liked it. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. That way you get a notification when I release my next video. Do you have a suggestion on a video that I should make? Leave a comment below. Let me know what you want me to create. That way I can better help you.